Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to give you a Gen 2 review on my experiences using Gen 2 Linux. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the website, the blog post that goes with it in the link below. Uh, something that's really cool about Gen 2 is the, your ability to configure your own kernel. So I will show you what that kind of looks like. And there's some documentation that shows you like specifically how to do that, but I'm just going to go in. So you'll go into your user source Linux directory, and then you can see all of your uh, files, your config files for your kernel and stuff. And then you'll want to go ahead and do uh, make menu config. And then you end up with your kernel. And forgive the terminal issue. I don't know why it something's going wrong with it, but I'll have to fix that. Uh, so basically, yeah, you got a whole bunch of stuff here, and like device drivers and all sorts of um, things to do in in your kernel. And most of it, you know, it, it helps your computer communicate with, you know, your synaptic, synaptic driver, like your touchpad or USB uh, support, sound, virtualization, like, you know, if you have a Docker or virtual machines or anything like that in your file systems, all that kind of stuff needs to be activated within the kernel. So all that kind of stuff you have to set up manually with Gentoo. So it's a good learning experience to help you understand how to put all that stuff together and how your computer works. So once you, you know, edit that, you have to rebuild your computer and that's or rebuild your kernel. And that's about the only time you have to reboot your system is rebuilding or upgrading your kernel. Um, so let's see here. Uh, use flags are another thing that I wanted to talk about and I'll go ahead and show you that as well. So let's see here. So a lot of the stuff happens in Etsy portage directory. And so you've got global use flags are big because, um, because Gentoo is compile compiles everything from source. You get the option to build into the software, what you want and only the stuff that you want or need in that package. And when you have a, when, when you download like a binary package, all of that stuff is kind of, those decisions are made for you. But with Gen 2, you're able to um, decide what goes in your system and what doesn't. So for example, let's just take a look. You can set things on a global basis or a per package basis. And I'm not gonna, I'm try not to ramble too much. So, uh, here you can set things globally. So I've got Network Manager, Pulse Audio, and Alsa set on a global basis. So every package that has these flags available will have them installed. I probably shouldn't have it that way. I'm going to get rid of those after the video. But anyway, and then so you've also got the package.use file. And I've actually turned it into a directory. I don't know if that's a best practice or not, but it seems to be working. And so now you've got a bunch of per package flags. So I've got PyQt5 with the SQL uh, with the SQL flag. Uh, and you can use the minus to get rid of flags as well. But so these are all the per package use flags that I've got set. So you can really make your system very small and compact and obviously fast with uh, you know, with use flags. You only have on your system what you absolutely need. And then Gentoo is also pretty stable. So I like the stability of it. Um, I've never really had any breaking issues that can't be fixed. And you can also make things a little bit more, quote, bleeding edge or the latest release, like that stuff that's still in testing by using overlays. And you can also put those overlays into uh, Portage or you can manage the overlays of Portage as well, which is really cool. But, uh, okay, so now you can see the uh, the latest, these are like testing, testing packages, 
with the tilde AMD64 so you can actually keep things um, you know more modern or more quote bleeding edge if you if you prefer that and th these are all set per package so you could do that as well so yeah those are use flags and that helps you keep your system you know tidy and minimal and that's pretty cool I mean Arch is uh, also a very minimal system but because it installs things from binaries it's not quite as minimal but it's still pretty you know it's still pretty minimal um, so yeah I'm going to go through this now and just talk about stuff about Gen 2. So a flexibility and control with um, with Gen 2, you actually get to choose exactly what you want on your system, even down to System D and OpenRC. So I'm not here to tell you which one is better, but the idea with Gen 2 is that you can choose which one you like. So that's pretty cool. Um, with Arch, you can use OpenRC, but it's not officially supported. Again, it's a source-based distro. Rolling release is pretty cool because all of the updates get, uh, you can you can update your portage tree, the package manager, and all of the kernel updates and software updates get uh, put into portage, and then you can pull those down to your computer and update your system. So you could even have a system that's five or 10 years old. I don't know about 10, but you probably could. And, um, and, update it and then you would not have to do a fresh install because it's all rolling release so there's no such thing as gen 2 10 or 11 or 12 it's just gen 2 and anytime there's an update on anything you can update the portage tree and that update will get pulled to your computer and then you can update it so it's pretty cool that you don't have to ever do a clean install or anything like that it's also a lot of fun to learn about your system, so I I'm definitely enjoy that aspect of it. I, again, I don't feel like I'm maximizing my use out of Gentoo, but I'm working on it. So I started with Gentoo to learn. Portage is pretty cool. Uh, apparently it's more secure because you don't uh, have anything, any extra bloat, and any extra code that's not necessary is, is potential security holes. So having a smaller system is more secure, theoretically. So it's bare bones, you know what's going on in your system. I really like the community, they're very friendly and helpful. And because you get to be elite hacker. So Gentoo and Arch are commonly compared to each other. And that's because they're both, they're both minimal distributions that only give you what you absolutely need. And you can choose, you both, have a, both of them have a high amount of control. So the differences between them are Gentoo is primarily a source-based distribution and Arch is a binary-based distribution, at least their package managers are. You can do both with either, but again, the recommended with Gentoo is source and the recommended with Arch is binary. So Gentoo, um, the package manager is built, in, built with use flags in mind and the ability to handle those. So you get a little bit more control, well, technically a lot more control over what's installed on your system. Uh, you can all you know so like uh, uh, eQuery uses Firefox and so we've got all of these different use flags that you may not want on your system eQuery uses MySQL oops devdb So you've got all these different use flags that are chosen for you on what, uh, so these are installed by default or, or um, the binary package decides for you what gets installed, but with Gen 2 you get to make the choice. So the use flags are pretty cool in that respect. Our Arch uses system D tech officially and Gen 2 gives you the choice between either or. I find the Gen 2 community to be a little bit more friendly um, and that's just personal experience. That's not to say anything negative about the Arch community, just that in my experience, the Gen 2 community has been more friendly and helpful. Um, Gen 2 is slightly more work, obviously, because you have a lot more stuff to deal with, like use flags uh, and, and the source-based uh, installation. And both have really, really, really good documentation. And both are rolling release, so that's pretty cool. So installing takes like, it took me like three days to install Gen 2 the first time 
but after you get comfortable with it, it'll only take like a couple hours. Yeah, I already talked about the kernel, how you can configure it. Good way to learn about computers. Troubleshooting, oh my goodness, uh, always check your use flags. So I spent about five hours uh, troubleshooting Emacs only to find out that uh, that I was missing a use flag, this XFT use flag. I was having encoding issues and I just needed this X XFT support. So, and people who are gonna help you uh, online do not know that you're using Gentoo most likely and they don't know to tell you to check your use flags. So it's just something you're gonna have to check first, like as very soon, early on in the troubleshooting process. Check your use flags. So, Portage is cool. It talk it uh, provides multiple versions and slotting, uh, so you can have multiple versions of things installed at the same time very easily. Um, you can update your system. You know it's rolling release. You can do it as much or li as little as you want. So downsides with Gentoo is it takes a long time to compile all of your updates. So my recommendation is don't sit and watch the packages software compile, just do something else or stick it in the background. I mean, you've got 10 workspaces, just put it in one of the background workspaces and then do your work or go to bed or go play outside or do something like that, you know, when you're updating. So yeah, and you could also install lar binaries for larger programs like Chromium or Firefox. Um, troubleshooting can be difficult. Another downside with Gentoo is the error messages can be pretty cryptic and hard to understand, or at least understand what to do. So here I've got two pictures here of some errors. Um, and so emerge, so trying to emerge a package, you get a slot conflict. And it says something along the lines of X11 base org server, X org server 1.19.5 is being pulled in and 1.19.3 is being pulled in. So we've got a slot conflict and Emerge doesn't know which package to install. So you'd wanna obviously just install the newest version, but this 1.9.3 is being pulled in as well. So you gotta like, it, it's just kind of like, okay, well, what do I do? You know, and, and, and you get used to these messages. They're not actually that difficult to figure out, but you just have to Google and sort of figure out what to do. And so Google is your friend and the documentation is your friend as well, the troubleshooting guide. And then there's also another example of uh, an unsatisfied use. So when trying to install Qt browser or Qt browser, I got this, uh, following required use flag constrained is unsatisfied web engine question mark widget web channel etc so it's like what exactly does this mean and um, actually just had to update um, uh, portage and I was able to install it but it wanted to have the web engine flag and so you've kind of got these dependency issues where you know certain use flags are not are not met and then different packages are uh, different versions of different packages are installed and uh, it can be kind of a nightmare. Uh, it's not actually, again, it's not actually that hard. Um, you just have to read the messages carefully and again, do Googling and um, it's, not, it's not that hard to figure out, but sometimes it can be difficult. And f I think for a beginner, I mean, I, I remember these were extremely difficult to understand when I was new in Gen 2, but so yeah, uh, messages are cryptic. And then also when you're installing, you'll have to uh, update config files on your own. So they get this thing called dispatch conf that will try to update the use flags for you, but then you have to use this dispatch conf to confirm the use uh, that you want to add those use flags. So some, some minor nuances that are kind of a pain in the butt with Gen 2. So overall, Gen2 is a really awesome distribution, especially as a beginner. It gives you a lot of opportunity to learn in depth how Linux and how computers work in general. So I, I definitely recommend it. 
both for beginners and advanced users. And you can even use it as your everyday operating system without too much effort uh, once you get the hang of it. I mean, it, there is definitely, it's a really steep learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty, you know, pretty much just, it's very stable. I haven't had any breaking changes that I haven't been able to resolve. So definitely check it out. And there's user patches and a whole bunch of other stuff that I hadn't even talked about in this video. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the website truthseekers.io. Have a good day.